The Laplace transform of f prime, f double, and so on can easily be expressed in terms of the Laplace transform of f. And this means that we can get rid of all derivatives in the equation if we take its Laplace transform. In doing so, a differential equation is converted to an algebraic equation. And solving an algebraic equation is much easier than solving a differential equation. So this is a popular method to solve differential equations. We will discuss all of this in this video. Sounds too good to be true, right? Indeed, there's also a catch, as we'll see at the end of this video. So how do we compute the Laplace transform of f prime? So there we go again, put f prime over here, integrate from zero to infinity and multiply with e to the power minus ts. Now we use integration by parts, so we integrate the f and leave the e to the power minus ts, so that gives us these terms over here, um, minus leaving this here and taking the, the, the derivative of e to the power minus ts with respect to t. So there we go. And then we are left with this term here gives us a uh, plus s, if we take the minus s out, plus s times integral 0 infinity f to e to the power minus ts. But that is just a Laplace transform of f. So we are left with the Laplace transform of f. And what do we have over here? Uh, if we take uh, s correctly, the upper boundary disappears again. And on the lower boundary, we just have a 1 from e to the power minus ts and an f of 0. It's on the lower boundary, so you get a minus f of 0. So this means that the Laplace transform of f prime is just s times the Laplace transform of f minus f0. So this way you can get rid of the derivatives. So what happens if you do this for a higher derivative, say f double? Now if you apply this to f double, so what you get is s times the Laplace transform of f prime minus f prime 0. Just do this formula over here with f double on the spot of f prime. And then you are over here. And then you can again apply the formula, but now for f prime instead of uh, uh, f double uh, in order to simplify this term over here. Now what, uh, what happens if you do that? Then you get an s times left left transform of f minus f zero. So this additional factor s gives you an s squared times the Laplace transform of f minus s times f of 0 minus the f prime of 0, which was still there. So in this way, you can go on and on and on and take the Laplace transform of uh, any derivative. So in general, if you have the nth derivative of uh, f, what do you do? You get the s to the power n times the Laplace transform of f just as you get, got an s squared over here and an s over here, you get an s to the power n. And you have this initial condition here, is an s to the power n minus 1 times f0, up to all terms. And the last one is the n minus 1 derivative of f in 0. So that is the general formula for the nth derivative of uh, the, for the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of f. And now you can apply this to an ordinary differential equation. For example, the example here. So what happens if you take the Laplace transform on the left and on the right? Okay, taking the Laplace transform on the left here and on the right, so we have to take the Laplace transform of zero. Well, that's silly, that's just zero. And on the uh, left, well, we are linear, so the Laplace transform of this linear combination is the Laplace transform of y double minus Laplace transform of y prime minus 2 times the Laplace transform of y. Now for the Laplace transform of y double we have this expression over here, then minus Laplace transform of y prime, the expression over here, minus 2 times the Laplace transform of y is 0. Now if we then collect terms, we have a <coughs> y of s times s squared times minus s times minus 2. This, this part, and um, uh, due to the initial condition, y0 equals 1 and y prime of 0 equals 0. So uh, we are left with a minus s over here, and with a plus 1 over here, and taking this to the other side we get a s minus 1. And then we get our y of s immediately by dividing by s squared minus s minus 2. So there it is. So there we have our solution of our differential equation. Well, we have It's Laplace transform. 
So where is the catch? So how can you apply this? First, you take the Laplace transform of here, initial value problem, then you just have to solve an algebraic equation for y of s, which is done over here, it goes very fast, and then you have to transform back to y of t. Oh, and there is the catch. This back transformation in general requires a nasty complex contour integral. This back transformation can be uh, uh, very tricky. So here uh, you have in general a problem. How are we going to uh, solve that problem? We will see that in later videos for some more examples.